Dad's strange little man, and you have my pity. Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am bringing you the Elmwood Draft, the first few rounds at least. Um, this is Friday night, the beginning of the draft, and the plan is to get in five rounds tonight. Now, I don't know if I'm going to film all five rounds, but I will do my best to film as much of it as I can. But sometimes we have too many lags, people uh, don't pick as quickly, and there's a lot of downtime, and I don't like stuff like that when it happens. So, and it's it, that is not very conducive to filming. So we will be um, possibly not filming all of it for that reason. I do want to get the first two rounds in, but right now you're looking at my draft board, and this is my draft board. This is what I've set up for who we're going to draft. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to scroll down here. This is uh, like, th I think this is like 30 guys. So these are the top guys that I would pick in the order that I would pick them. My draft board, this is on Strat Draft, by the way. Um, if you're not familiar with it and you're a Strat person, well, I don't know how you're not familiar with it, but you should get familiar with it. Uh, if you're in, like, you know, play by um, email leagues. Um, so anyway, uh, so on Strat Draft, you can set up your um, board in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways is where you just list the 30 guys from uh, top to bottom that you want in the order that you want them. But the, uh, uh, the, but there is also a way that you can set it up. Like I could set up this top group right here that you see. I could say, take one player from this group. Say I wanted a shortstop. But then once I pick the shortstop, and by the way, this board is set up to automatically draft these players in this order when it comes to my turn. Um, if I wanted to take a shortstop, but then I didn't want another shortstop, I would say take one player from this and then these five would all be shortstops. Then I could say take one player from this group, say I wanted a catcher next. Then all of these would be catchers and the uh, draft board would be set up to say, you know, um, okay, we took the shortstop. So now we're skipping to this group and we're taking a catcher. But right now, this is the very beginning of the draft. There's a lot of available players, a lot of good talent out there. So I've just got it set up to say, these are my 30 guys. And you can see I've got the usual suspects up here in the top tier. Pete Alonzo, Luis Reyes, uh, Jordan Alvarez, Fernando Tati Jr., Merrill Kelly. Then you go down to the next one, I've got Keuchel, Aquino, Tom Murphy, Bo Bichette, Ursula, then Starling Marte, Eloy Jimenez, um, DJ LeMayhew, Aaron Savali, Zach Playsack, and then, and so on down the line. I mean, and then you get down to the bottom tier where, where Homer Bailey is, Aaron Bummer, Brandon Crawford, and so on. So, and probably Brandon Crawford shouldn't even be there. He's starting to diminish, but. I, you know. So anyway, that is my draft board. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the main draft board, and there it is. This is the main draft board right here. And it's 7 o'clock, so in like two minutes, um, as I'm broadcasting this, in two minutes we will be starting the draft. Now you can see here's all, you know, all of the teams are listed right here. And I am the Providence Grays, so I was the ninth best, if you want to look at it that way, or 11th worst team in the league last year um, overall. So I would have the ninth pick, but I I traded my first uh, two round pick, or first, actually first three round picks away so you can see other teams have my picks here but i do have this i have uh, the new york knights pick in round two so i will have the 24th pick in the draft um and then these are skipped these are two 
um, teams who lost their first round pick, or at least it moved to another round, I think, to like a later round in the draft um, because they had overuse. And so they don't get their first round pick at, in the first round for that. That's the penalty. So we are very close to starting, I believe. Um, and uh, you can see Pedro or uh, Vladimir Guerrero is uh, not Pedro Guerrero. He played in the 80s. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero has already been taken by the Enwell Bird Dogs up here. So we will see. And then the picks will go off as people make them. I may have to refresh the page, uh, but um but you will be seeing who goes off the board um as they go and then hopefully we won't have too much dead time as we have just started it's seven o'clock so let me go hit the uh yeah there you go so tati jr is gone he went to kakeyanga so um So, yeah, well, according to this, Cleveland has a deadline of 7.30, which is a half hour from now, but I'm sure the commissioner doesn't want more than, he's made quite clear that he doesn't want more than a few minutes to go by between each pick. So that's interesting. Uh, Tati Jr. is the second pick. I mean, or, although it's not really unexpected, he is a very good player. And uh, so... Nothing surprising, really, there. Um, so we are underway. Let's see if... Okay, he updated it to 9.15, but still, I don't even know if he really wants even 15 minutes to go by. But um, it should be interesting. So, so anyway, now if we go back to... Um, Oh, hmm. that shouldn't have logged me out. Um, so now if we go to my office and my profile, you will see that Tati is gone. He's unavailable because he was picked. So, and then that's how the, how the uh, draft, the Strat Draft website works. It's a very, very good tool for people who um, have draft leagues like ours. Um, and I have the uh, site uh, minimized a little bit here on my desktop because of the fact that if you scroll over a little more, you've got the names of the GMs in the league. And I'm not so sure if any of them if there's any that wouldn't want their names on a uh, um, on a Sportsman Z video, so um, to keep that private, they uh, will uh, to keep that private. I I made the screen smaller. <laughs> So, yeah, that was the commissioner just sent me a text and said, it's been a minute, light him up. <laughs> Apparently, I'm his attack dog. When people are taking too long to make a pick, I'm the one that has to go get them. I don't know how that, I mean, all right, I do know how that happened. I used to do that. Um, but I used to do it like a couple of years ago when he didn't want me doing it. And I was making people mad. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's holding him up, but, uh, um, he said, the commissioner said he will put timers on. Now, I don't know how this is just one slot timed and no other slots are timed at all. I've never really seen that. It's either timed or it isn't. And, uh, oh, you can see, uh. I'm the Providence Grazing and see my logo up here, which is kind of cool. But anyway, but yeah, I don't know how there's like one person timed, but nobody else is. 
you know, you would think it's either the timers are on or the timers aren't on. So I don't know what's going on with this, but yeah, we would really have ideally liked for him to have already um, picked. So maybe I should wait until the pick is made and then we can, uh, you know, resume the recording. Okay, so we're back and um, uh, Chris Paddock was taken by the Cleveland Comets. So Chris Paddock of San Diego. And now we are waiting on the Green Lakes Gophers. Now I know he was on earlier, so I don't know why he hasn't made his pick yet. Let's see if there's a reason for that or or maybe he has no he hasn't he really hasn't so um you know i don't know i mean the commissioner has made clear for the last uh for the last uh so often that uh um for like really ever since the the game has been out um we've known so um i don't know if um he doesn't know or or what so But anyway, yeah, I got another text from the commissioner, and he said that you would think folks would at least have their top three. Yeah, you would. You would think folks have their top 30, because the um, because this website can accommodate 30 picks, so I don't know why. Um, I don't know why the... Um, why, you know, why the person hasn't picked yet, but uh, especially since he was on. And that's a really frustrating thing. I don't know how many of you out there are in leagues that use this, that use this draft, um, strat draft, but you can see when um, the different GMs are on, you know, on the site. And it's really, really frustrating when they're up. It's their pick, and you can see that they're on, but no picks get made by them. And what's really drives me nuts, absolutely drives me nuts, is when you can see that they're on, they haven't picked, and then they get off. You can see them get off, and they still haven't picked. And people do that all the time. And I don't know, I really, the explanation eludes me why you would even do that. But anyway, let's see if, um, let's see if, no, he still has not picked. And you can see that this time slot that he was supposed to have picked by, I think it was like 718 or something, is not even there anymore. So. I don't know what's going on with the time slot thing because really he said he was going to try not to time picks, but um, sometimes you have to go against that and you have to do it and he may have to. Okay, so here we are and uh, some picks have gone off the board now. Green Lakes took Zach Galen. The New York Knights took Pete Alonzo, which is not surprising because the guy who runs the New York Knights actually lives in New York. And I think he's a Mets fan, so it's not surprising he took Alonzo. Federal Way took Jordan Alvarez, and uh, the Bronx Barracudas took Bo Bichette. So now we are up to what would have been my pick, but it's really the... Uh, Cleveland Comets, and he was the guy who took a few minutes to take, um, to draft Chris Paddock. So we're going to see what happens here. Now, hopefully the, because you can see the Enwell Bird Dogs EBD, he has two picks in a row um, in place of the perpetrators and the uh, Philistines. So hopefully he will I mean, he's already got his queue ready to go, and the commissioner has him already queued up and ready and everything. So 
that once we get down to him, we're fine. Um, it is kind of annoying. I always have to um, hit refresh to get to the uh, to get to the um, updated picks. It would be nice if if the picks would just you could just see them come up come up on the board when they were picked, but um, apparently that doesn't happen. So anyway, we will. Uh, I guess I'll just keep doing it like this. I'll like stop it and then I'll wait for some picks to come up and then I'll, you know, restart it again when somebody actually decides that they uh, want to make some picks because, um, I mean, I shouldn't even have to do this though because people should be knowing this and they should be ready to go, but they aren't. All right. so. Um, the Comets have taken Keston Hira with their pick. So that is bringing us to the Kremlin Gremlins, who I've been talking to, so he should be picking soon. And let's see. He should be picking soon. Um, and then, like I said, you've got end well for two picks after that and um they uh they either should be ready to go or they've got the commissioner picking for them and so he will make sure that they get who they want all right here we go now we're now we're picking it up gavin lux goes to kremlin eloy jimenez goes to um end well and so does arrestus Aquino and Starling Marte goes to the posts, even though the post the, that's the commissioner, the, the painted post is the commissioner. And he said he was going to go in another direction, but um, oh, all right. <laughs> he said he forgot to turn off his auto draft. Well, that'll happen. So we are now up to Caseville. So let's see if he's picked. I'm getting interestingly close. And Arreus has not been picked yet, which is kind of uh, surprising. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I need pitching. I really need pitching bad. But Arreus, 300 hitting second baseman in his first year in the league, you got to, you know, I mean, the only problem with with uh, picking Arreus is that he's on the Twins, and I'm a White Sox fan, so I would spend the summer watching them play the Twins and being like, yeah, Arreus, come on, get a hit. <laughs> Drive in some runs, get a hit. Um, you know, even though I really shouldn't be saying that. Okay, here we go. Did he get picked? No. DJ LeMayhew was taken by Caseville. Christian Walker went to Chatham, Kevin Biggio going to Gas House, and Jordan Yamamoto went to Endwell. So, hey. Um, I guess that's... Uh, I guess it's it's looking pretty good, maybe for me to get uh, for me to get Arreus. That would be great if that happened. So, so we'll have to see. Let's see what happened if. Some other guys went off the board, probably not, but um, yeah, Jordan, Jordan Yamamoto, he's on, was he on maybe Seattle? Maybe? No, no, not Seattle. I'm trying to think what team he was on. But anyway, um, so Kevin Biggio going to Gas House. I know Gas House needed a, uh, they needed a second baseman, so they got one now. Christian Walker went to Chatham. Christian Walker. 
don't really remember him offhand, but um, and LeMayhew. Now, if you went back and you watch my first round prediction video where I predicted what the first round would be, I said LeMayhew would go in the first round. And there were people that said I was crazy because he's a little older. But guess what? He went in the first round. So, um, I don't think. Yeah, so now what am I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm eight away. Eight away, and I can hope that I can get um, a Reyes. That would be awesome if that could happen. So we'll have to see if I can do that. Okay, so now what we have is um, Jesus Lazardo going to Worcester and Will Smith going to um, the uh, Federal Way team, the Federal Way boom. So now uh, the my good friend Chris Dufour and the Adams family are up at the top of round two, and I am getting very close to getting a race. And let's see if that just happened, if he, or at least if he had picked. No, he did not. He always does this too. And I'm saying this, if you're watching Chris, I'm saying this. He always complains about people taking a few minutes or taking long or taking a while. And then it comes to him, and he does exactly that same thing. Like right now, my auto pick is on. If it if I was if I was him, my pick was already made. And if it when it gets down to me, when the guy right before me picks, my pick will be made. Okay, he's taking Mike Yastrzemski. That's not a shocker. He's a Boston Red Sox fan, so. Uh, and, and, uh, Mike Yastrzemski's grandfather was the Yaz, although I'm sure Mike Yastrzemski wants to be the Yaz, so we'll see, but at least I guess that wasn't too long, anyway, for him to have picked, but, um, but I mean, you know, I just, I, I don't know, I guess I don't understand it, because Right now, there is a ton of people. There's like every great player that's available is out there, and everybody has known about it. I even was kind of, you know, this year I was kind of busy with my channel, so I did less work. I did less footwork um, putting a sheet together, a draft list, than I have in past years. And I still had 30 guys in my queue ready to go done the research, read the um, baseball prospectus, I was ready to go. But there's still obviously people that are struggling here. And there is still a ton of talent out there. You could throw a dart in a dartboard and get a good player from this crop of players. So I don't know. I don't understand this. But I am one, two, three, four, five away. I'm just five away. I mean, it's crazy to think that I might get a Reyes. And I'm sitting here talking to you guys because this is good. I'm not streaming this live. So like people, you know, in the league can't, um, you know, can't watch me and then say, oh yeah, Reyes, why aren't I taking a Reyes? So, hey, all right, I heard some beeps, maybe. Uh, Griffin Canning going to the Rivermen. Now, I like the Griffin Canning uh, pick kind of, except that he, does have Tommy John surgery in his history. And in fact, he has like, um, I think he has a speckled history of injuries. So that is, uh, you know, we'll have to see how that works out for him. But he is supposed to be in Anaheim's starting rotation this year. So there is that. So we know that that's, that's the case. And now we're back up to the Cleveland Comets again. 
and now I am one, two, three, four away. I'm just four. I am four picks away from getting a Reyes, people. And if it's not a Reyes, then it's going to be uh, the next guy, I think, after a Reyes. Well, let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. Let's take a walk over there. Um, front office, my office, my profile. And we can scroll down and we can see that. Oh, he just went. He just got picked. So now Merrill Kelly's the top guy. Oh, man. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, there he goes. So, all right. So let's, let's take a look. See what happened here. Um. Liam Hendricks went to Cleveland, and then Arias got picked by the NorCal Crusaders. So, I'm going to obviously say that was a good pick. And now, Green Lakes is the only guy between me and Merrill Kelly. And um, it was Merrill Kelly just barely edged out Keichel for me. Uh, Keichel is on the White Sox. I'm a White Sox fan. Keuchel has a history of being good, but Keuchel has some drawbacks. First of all, he's a year or two older than Kelly. Second of all, he's left-handed, and this is a 20-team league. So a left-hander in a 20-team league gets torched a little more than they might normally have gotten torched, either in real life or in a bigger league. And Merrill Kelly's right-handed. And the kicker that really separated them for me that really put them put Merrill Kelly ahead of um, Keuchel is that Merrill Kelly can pitch all season long for us, um, for any team that he's on. He had 180 innings pitched. So, um, so when I get, if I get him, I can pitch him all season long. But Keuchel had only 100 and something, 103, 108, something like that innings pitched. So he can only pitch 170 innings. Once he hits 170, he has to be done for the year. So, um, you know, I, I, it would be huge to be able to get Merrill Kelly and have him all season long in my rotation, pitching right to the end of the season, and then I only have to worry about the last four slots. Um, and I have guys to fill the last four slots, but they're all 170 inning guys. So let's see, something just happened. So there we go, I got Merrill Kelly. Yay. All right, so we have Merrill Kelly. Um, and I am going to put him on my team. Got, got Arizona right here. So we're going to grab him out, and there he is. There he is. Let's see if we can get that up there. So there he is, folks. There's Merrill Kelly. There's his, uh, there's the back of his card. And yes, he's coming to Providence. He, he may not actually be happy about that, but he is coming to Providence. So... That's good news. So we'll put Arizona back. Answer the texts. So, yeah, the uh, commissioner has given me
Yeah, he's giving me giving me gruff because I I told him I was going to take Keikel, but I was clear to tell him that it would be um that it would be Merrill Kelly first and then Keikel. So so now we uh so now we wait. Okay, so some other players have gone now. Giancarlo Stanton going to federal way. 59 at bats last year because he was injured almost all year. But you had to figure that was going to happen. Dustin May going to the Bronx Barracudas. And then Austin Riley to Endwell. And now the Kremlin Gremlins are back up. And I know I've been been talking with that guy on chat so i know that he's around um so we'll see what he picks but um yeah interesting turn of events picking stanton this early i mean i knew he would you you had to kind of expect i mean it's the giancarlo stanton so or giancarlo or however you pronounce it but so you had to think he was probably going to go pretty quickly so let me go through here through my draft list and take stanton off because he has been picked yep there he is and i had him in yellow highlighter which meant that i thought maybe he would slip under the uh under the radar but he didn't so, yeah. So let's see here. You know, let's go take a look at my board now and see who the next guy on my uh, pick list would be. Dallas Keuchel. So, you know, and I need pitching. I really do need pitching. I am very pitching poor. So it's not like I would want to move Keigel just because I got um, Merrill Kelly, because I wouldn't. So, uh, but you can see, like, you know, I mean, it, my, I didn't have a bad draft board. I mean, everybody in the top tier is gone. Two of the five in the second tier are gone. Four of the five in the third tier are gone. So, yeah, I mean, only the only the last tier, only the sixth player group doesn't have anybody missing yet. But that's, um, you know, so there you go. Um, Austin Riley, did we know he was gone before? No, I don't think, oh yeah, we did, yeah, we did. So, um, all right, so now I guess we're hung up a little bit for a while on Kremlin Gremlins. I don't know why, because like I said, I've been on chat with a guy and I know that he's wanted to make his own picks for the first few. So he should be ready, but whatever. All right, so now we've got uh, Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease went to the Kremlin Gremlins. So that's one of the White Sox I'm not going to get. And then Tommy Edmond went to Endwell. And now Philly, the Philly Philistines are up. So we'll have to see what happens there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with Kelly. I just looked at his card a little more between the breaks. And... Uh, Pretty happy with that. So now I've got one spot solidified all the year through in the rotation, and I only have to worry about interchanging pitchers in the in the final four. And that's how it is right now. And that's assuming I don't take another guy, another starting pitcher who's a full year guy. Um, but I don't have another pick until let's see. I don't I think it's the fourth. And we're headed towards the um, – oh, wait a minute. Go 
to draft views my um, my draft and uh, so let's see so here are my picks and uh, yeah I've got a pick in the fourth and fifth so and we're supposed to try to get through the fifth tonight um, in this or for your purposes in this um, video we're going to try to get through the fifth but um, that remains to be seen um, but we will let's hope we can all right so we're waiting on the Philly Philistines to pick now um, so yeah okay so Brian Reynolds went to the Philly Philistines and Zach Playsack was taken by painted posts the commissioner even though I warned him that uh, that he would be a uh, risky pick but uh, you know that's you know some people just don't listen to the sportsman you know what I'm saying gotta listen to the sportsman but anyway he doesn't have to um, I'm, not, I'm not saying Zach Playsack is not going to go on and have a good career a good long career and pitch 160 to 180 innings every uh, year but I'm saying you can't bank on that and uh, if he's banking on it If he's banking on it, uh, then we'll see. So, anyway, um, California is up. I don't know again what's taken him so long, but. Um, anyway, he's on the and he's on the West Coast. So this draft started at 7 p.m. East Coast time. It was only like four in the afternoon for him. So um, so we'll see. But um, yeah. So we're hung up here for another couple minutes. Okay. So a few more picks have gone. Um, John Means went to California. Again, if you watched my preview video about draft tips, John Means is probably a risky pick, but if he only needed a really good starter for his rotation this year, and he didn't really care so much about the out years, then that's, I guess that's not so bad. And then you got Carson Kelly, the catcher, going to the Caseville Cannons. Carson Kelly, the catcher, going to the Caseville Cannons. And then you got Giovanni Gallegos going to Chatham. And then J.P. Crawford going to Gas House. So um, Gas House building his infield, apparently. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're waiting now again on the Comets. And again, we might be waiting a little bit on them because they always seem to have a, a hang up when it gets to them. So again, we wait. All right. So Will Harris goes to uh, the Cleveland Comets and Brendan McKay. I didn't even have Brendan McKay on my draft list i don't even know who that is but anyway he goes to worcester or wooster wooster and uh so now the the uh, uh federal way boom is up and uh then we are back to the top with the endwell bird dogs so yeah 
and again we wait all right so we've had jose your go off the board to federal way and then endwell took sean murphy the catcher i believe and uh, mitch keller went to keikianga uh, mitch keller i believe was a starting pitcher for pittsburgh who did terribly this year in fact he had a um he had the highest uh, batting average of balls in play of any player in the history of baseball um, facing something over like 200 batters or something like that. So, but they are, he is supposed to be better than that. He is supposed to be one of the uh, uh, highly touted um, young players. and. Um, according and like um baseball perspective says he can't possibly be that unlucky um again so with the you know with the batting average of balls in play so um so anyway yeah your quitty is gone so i have to take him off the uh off my draft tracking list um and sean murphy and mitch keller i don't know if mitch keller was on it i don't think he was on it but um i know that sean murphy there he is he's gone so yeah so we will see um i, I i'm sensing the picks are going off so let's see what we've got Yep, Tommy Malone went to NorCal. Man, and Aaron Bummer. So there's another White Sox player I'm not going to get. Uh, the Comets took Aaron Bummer and then Tommy Malone to NorCal. That's kind of, uh, that's a little on the crazy side. I mean, both of those picks, I think, are. It's a little early for relievers unless you have arrived already. So apparently... Um, Cleveland thinks they've arrived. Um, and Malone, I think I had Malone on my list, but I would not have taken him this early. There's no way. In fact, you know, he still has to make the Baltimore Orioles. So, you know, and that's by no means a guarantee. Um, but yeah. So Aaron Bummer, where's I know he's on my list. Let's see. Or maybe he was on my he may have been on my main list. So all right. So anyway. Yeah. I think I'm up to date and it sounds like maybe another pick or two went off. Uh, hopefully we didn't lose it. Yeah. All right. So Marcus Walden was picked by the Green Lakes Gophers and Nick Anderson by the Knights. Nick Anderson. Remember, Nick Anderson was on my list. Um, I of like first round picks, but um, it's a little later than that. But still, Marcus Walden, I didn't even have on a list. I don't even know who that is. But Nick Anderson. Yeah. I had him on the list, and he is off now, so. Uh, so, we are, we're trucking along, trucking along, and I am going to have a pick in the fourth, so I may try to get through the fourth so that you guys can see who my second pick is. Because um, I'm not here, right? I'm not in this run. I don't think. Um, no. So I am not in this round. But yeah, I'm in the fourth, so we'll see if I can get through the fourth um, on this video. Even though we're going to go through the fifth tonight, I'm still going to try to get through the fourth, and then I'll stop because 
we're running out of recording time and then the computer may actually say it's too full and I have to stop anyway, so who knows. All right, so more picks to talk about. James Paxton went to Federal Way. I don't know if I got him in the uh, in the previous uh, where we left off. Uh, Tony Gonsolin goes to the Bronx Barracudas. Uh, Wooster takes Robert Louis Stevenson. I don't know if his middle name is Louis or not, but I like to call him Robert Louis Stevenson, the author. And then uh, Brandon Kinsler goes to the Kremlin Gremlins, and Oscar Mercado goes to the Bobtown, or no, not the Bobtown. Uh, he goes to Endwell. So Oscar Mark Mercado going to Endwell, and Wooster's back up again, and he just picked. So you would think he knows that. Hey, you know, and not only that, he just picked like like three picks ago so how do you not know that after i pick robert stevenson if i get him this is the next guy i want i mean i'm already set i'm over in my thing i'm all in fact i had actually changed mine and we'll go over and take a look at that since we have a break in the action for a minute uh go to my my office my profile and now we scroll down and i have adjusted things so that oh i didn't i did not make that change so let me make sure that i do that um hauser where's hauser i'm going to put adrian hauser up there and he is s673 so we're going to put him right here s673 and so now Adrian Hauser is up there, and then we're going to put Dallas Keuchel 744. And then we're going to put Murphy, Tom Murphy, S973. And now I got those three lined up right there. I'm just going to take the, him out of there and take him out of here. And then we got to go down. I forgot to save it the last time. So we're going to submit it. And uh, yeah, accepted. And so now I'm set to take Hauser and then Keichel and then Tom Murphy. And uh, well, the way this is going, you got to believe I'm going to get one of them. So we are back and looking at the main draft board and uh, and who's up? Yeah, Wooster. Trying to stick around here because you would think he knows that he um, is up and that he has to and that it's his pick and everything. And maybe that was it. It was and he took Anthony Smallmouth Bass. So now we have the uh, Kekeonga Rivermen are up next. And uh, I believe that's, yeah, yeah. So they're up next. Um, and then California, the California Missions pick next. And then Caseville. So you can see I'm over in, uh, I'm the ninth pick over in the fourth round. So I am about roughly, uh, I'm about 17 picks away. So normally to think that, um, one of Keuchel, Murphy, or um, Hauser would be available 17 picks from now would be a little optimistic, but who knows? I mean, because this is, I think this has really been a deep draft. This, there has been a lot of good players available. And in fact, we haven't even really scratched the surface uh, because like people like Tommy Malone had been picked. So, um, so we'll have to see.
anyway. All right, so a few more picks. Uh, they're starting to go now. Uh, Kremlin Gremlins took Adrian Hauser, who I had just switched up to the top, if you remember, to the top of my queue. So now he's out of there. And Gio Ursula was taken by California. And Tyler Duffy, the relief pitcher from Minnesota, is going to Caseville. So Caseville, but Caseville is. They're an established team. They're pretty good. So, yeah, I could see them saying, you know, round three, I'm going to start taking relievers because I've, you know, I've, I've arrived. I'm almost there. I mean, because they were a good team last year. So, legit. So, yeah, so he's he's bolstering his bullpen already. Um, and Chatham is now up. With uh, Gas House to follow, and then uh, and then end well, and then two picks for um, Federal Way, and that's another thing that also bothers me is you'll see guys with two picks in a row. They'll make the first pick, and then the second pick it takes them another ten minutes to figure out who the second pick should be. Again, I don't get any of this because. I have a queue that's already set up, and I have boom, 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 boom. I have players right in order. So if I had right now, let's say somebody picks, and then I had three picks in a row, I have three guys in my queue the way I want them. So the queue would just take those three guys, and that's exactly what I would want. I wouldn't have to sit and pick my hair out trying to decide whether I really want those guys in that order. So I don't really um i don't know maybe it's just me and i just don't get it but um but i mean that's the way i see it so um all right let's see was that a pick oh yeah we had a couple now um alex gordon goes to chatham i have no idea why alex gordon's going in the third round good outfielder good arm but not a good hitter um and then luis urias is going to gas house and then garrett hampson going to endwell and now we're up on that situation i was just talking about where federal way has two picks in a row and you know ideally now I almost can see him delaying a little bit here, saying, okay, I don't know what two guys I want. But once he picks one of them, you would think the other one should be immediate. It shouldn't be like, okay, I'm going to pick this guy, and now I'm going to take 10 minutes to figure out if I what my next guy really should be. Oh, man. I tell you, next year, I got to not trade my high um, early round picks. And in fact, I have to try to acquire as many early round picks as I can so that I can be the guy with the queue that's going boom, 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 and the picks are just coming off the board. But uh, that's not really happening right here. I, I, I will say we're making good progress. Overall, we're making good progress. But you really... I mean, we're in the first three rounds of a 20-round draft with a deep, um, you know, a, a deep draft pool. So it really shouldn't be taking this long. And now Talkman just went. So Talkman goes to Federal Way, and this is exactly what I was talking about. He takes Talkman, but he doesn't know exactly right now who the next guy would be. Yeah. Next year, I've got to get by. Uh, I've got to have like I got to try to acquire the whole first round so that the first round can just be done. But anyway, I digress. So let's see. No idea how long this should take. I mean. Really, it shouldn't take even more than another minute, but we all know that, that it is going to take another minute. 
another maybe quite a few minutes. Oh no, maybe he did pick. Looks like he may have picked his next guy. He did. He took Shed Long. Shed Long, the second baseman for um, the Mariners. Now, he was on my list. And then T Spencer Turnbull goes to Endwell. Now, uh, so now, yeah, I'm only eight picks away. Um, yeah, I mean, I had Shed Long on my draft list because I do need a second baseman. But he was down quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit further uh, for one thing he can't play all year i don't think i don't think he had enough at bats last year that he's a full year eligible guy for us in this league um so that was definitely a pick for next year for you know going forward which i guess is fine if uh you know if either a you think you're all set for this year and you're just picking for next year or b you know you're going to be bad, and so you really don't care. And this actually helps you be bad because you got you picked a guy who's going to be for down the line, but he can't help you much this year. So I don't know. And then Turnbull. So now, yeah, let me scratch a couple of guys off this list now because Hauser has been picked, and. Um, Let's see. Uh, no, that's Danny Duffy. Um, and looking, looking, looking to see who has been picked up. Well, looks like maybe somebody else just went. Or it sounded like it because I've got my phone next to me and my phone gives me notifications when there's an email and this draft site will send me an email every time a pick is made um, so so there is that yeah Tom Murphy didn't go yet I thought he had but he didn't um, Let's see. I yeah, pretty sure somebody else was just picked. Talkman, there's Talkman. He's he's gone. All right. I mean, uh, let's take a look. See what we got here. No, no, no pick made. So we wait a few more picks, and guess what? I'm not going to get Keiko. Keiko went to Green Lakes, and J.A. Happ went to NorCal, and Trent Thornton went to Wooster, and Nick Senzel went to the Rivermen. So now I am one, two, three, four picks away, and now Tom Murphy is my highest guy, the catcher for Seattle. Um, now I had probably better go look at my list again because, um, and see who would be picked if Tom Murphy gets picked. Uh, yeah, we're all the way down where Tom Murphy and then it would be, um, Adam Plutko and then Roughnet It Odor. Um, not sure I want to do that. I want to go S109. I want to go Odor right there. Because I do need a second baseman. So. We will take him off the list right from there and move him up. And so now submit that. And so now that is, um, yeah, Tom Murphy and then Odor and then Plutko 
and then Junis. I guess I would be happy with that. Yeah. All right. So now we go back to the home. And uh, huh, Keikel. I got scooped on Keikel. But, um, you know, it happens. It happens, man. So that's where we are. Uh, still one, two, three, four picks away. Four picks away from Tom Murphy, the big lumbering, lumber hitting catcher for the uh, for the Mariners. Um, doesn't have a great track record either, and he's thirty years old, so. I don't know, it's a little risky, but getting a good hitting catcher that can also throw people out is very rare. So I'm going to go with it. Um, and we'll just wait and see if I can get him. All right, so more picks go off the board. Trevor Richards goes to Kremlin. I don't know if we left off with him or not. Michael Chavis goes to Federal Way. Darwinson Hernandez goes to the Bronx Barracudas, and I got Tom Murphy. So, got my catcher, so we'll go and we'll put him on the team. And uh, so I'm pretty happy with that because get he's a good hitting catcher that also was good defensively, and like I said, those are those are hard to come by in Stratomatic leagues. So, um, pretty happy with that. And uh, probably probably people congratulating me on taking Tom Murphy. Maybe not. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. That's where we are, almost through the fourth round, which is probably where I'm going to end the recording or end this episode of the Elmwood Draft 2020 or 2020. All right, so after I took Murphy, Danny Santana goes to the Kremlin Gremlins. That was a good pick. That guy was, he had a serious stick. And then Victor Reyes goes to Endwell, which was also a good pick in my opinion. And then Felix Pena to Kremlin, or no, not Kremlin, to uh, Keikianga. And now, of course, Keikianga has a pick right after that and still doesn't really know who he wants um, uh, after that first pick. But anyway, um, so we'll see. So we are approaching the end of the uh, fourth round. It's getting there. Um, we'll wait for the Rivermen to decide who they want, um, after Felix Pena. Let's move this over a little bit. And, uh, and then it will be the Kremlin Gremlins, and then the Cannons, the Chatham Clippers, Gas House, Federal Way, Wooster in Toronto will round it out, and that will be Toronto's first pick, by the way. I would mention they are the world champions of our league uh, from last year. And they had made it, obviously, they made a lot of trades to get themselves uh, to position themselves to win last year's World Series. And that involved uh, dealing picks away, obviously. And so now they, um, they're coming up on their first pick of this draft and they uh they have a lot of good players they have Kluber they have uh El Tuve I don't know if they're going to be allowed to have garbage cans at their stadium though um so they have a lot of good players um so it may not kill him that this is you know that this was his uh the first round that he was able to pick in um 
So we'll see how uh, we'll see how the fourth round uh, finishes out, and I will be back with the end of the fourth round. All right, so I'm going to end it right here, even though there is one more pick left in the fourth round, and that would be the world champion Toronto Torrance and their first pick of the entire draft here in round four. But I don't know where he is, so um, we will cut it off right here. But this is almost all of round four. It's just one pick short. So that is the first four rounds minus one pick of the Elmwood Stratomatic Baseball Draft. And uh, I hope you found that interesting. I hope that it was uh, informative in some ways, possibly. Uh, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Send it to people you think might be interested. Or, if not this video, other videos. And ring the bell so that you know when I have a new video out. But for right now, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z from Draft Central for the Elmwood Stratomatic Baseball League.